I'm going to show you how to get better gaming performance without spending a dime. Stay tuned. We often spend a lot of money chasing after FPS. Graphics cards are expensive, even though prices have come down quite a bit lately. However, once in a while, we are able to considerably increase our graphics card's performance without spending a dime. In fact, I've covered many ways to do that on this channel. With the introduction of NVIDIA's 40 series GPUs, as always, they released a new driver in order to support those new GPUs. But this driver came packed with a nice little surprise. And that surprise is a considerable boost in performance to existing RTX GPUs. If you're like me and don't currently have the funds for a shiny new 40 series GPU, then by simply updating your driver, you can get in some cases a 20% boost in FPS for literally doing nothing but updating your driver to version 522.25 or later. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump on the system and get these drivers updated so we can see how well this thing helps us. Okay, so just for full transparency, obviously I've already installed the newest drivers available. So on this right here, I'm just gonna show you how to do this just in case you have an older driver. But we're gonna go ahead and I like to use the program NV Clean Install. It's a great program. I'll go ahead and leave a link to it in the description below, but it's a great way to keep your drivers updated for NVIDIA GPUs. So you go ahead and double click on it, hit yes to the user account control. And then once it opens up, it'll tell you your current driver, which I'm currently running 526.86. And it does look like there is a newer driver available. So you can either go install best driver for my hardware, or you can set manually select a driver version. So if you come down here, you can select a driver version from the list and you need to get at least 522.25 in order for you to get the benefit from the new driver update. So once you choose that, you go ahead and hit next and it'll go ahead and ask you which components of the driver do you want to install. I typically pick the physics and the audio over HDMI and I leave all the other stuff unchecked. But if you need some of this other stuff, then you can go ahead and check whatever you need on it and then go ahead and hit next again. And at this point, it goes ahead and downloads the driver. So I'm gonna skip ahead here until the driver is downloaded and then show you what to do next. Okay, so once you get to this part right here, the next thing you want to do is decide which options that you want to select. I typically select perform clean install, and then I also check to show the expert tweaks. And then from here, I go down to enable message signaled interrupts, and you check on that, and then you click the next one. But if you want to go through, you can go through here and enable any other setting that you want. But these are just the ones that I typically do when I'm updating drivers. So once we hit next, all you have to do is push the install button and it'll install the newest driver. So I dug through my collection of games on Steam to find a good example of DirectX 12 titles that should benefit from this driver update. Prior to updating my drivers, my system was running driver version 516.40. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was a little bit back, but I've been lazy and haven't updated them in quite a while. For this test, I'm also not gonna be using 522.25. Instead, I'm simply gonna be testing on the latest version of NVIDIA's drivers at the time I did my testing, which is 526.86. All right, the first game we're gonna be looking at today is Control. Control is a DirectX 12 title that supports RTX and DLSS. This game I benchmarked at 2560 by 1440. Unfortunately, I have to play this game at 16 by nine because playing it at 21 by nine on my ultra wide gets kind of unplayable. At first, I benchmarked this game with RTX and DLSS turned off. And for that, I really didn't get much of an improvement. On the old NVIDIA drivers, I averaged around 67.2 FPS. And with the driver update, I averaged around 67.9 FPS. Now, Control doesn't have a built-in benchmark. So in order to do benchmarks on this game, I essentially had to run the same course with both driver versions. That can lead to some variation and a fairly high margin of error. So with the new driver performing about 1% better than the old driver, that's pretty much within the margin of error. However, when I tested this game with RTX enabled, I scored 44.9 FPS on the old driver and 46.1 FPS on the new driver. That gave us a 2.6% benefit with the new drivers. But I didn't stop there. I went ahead and tested this game with both RTX 
and DLSS enabled and scored 77.4 on the old drivers and 80.6 on the new drivers. That's a 4% improvement. Now moving on, the next game we're testing was Cyberpunk 2077. This is another DirectX 12 game that supports RTX and DLSS. On this game, I benchmarked it at 1080p because anything over that is pretty unplayable on my system. At least with RTX enabled it is. Running the game with RTX and DLSS disabled, we got 80.7 FPS with the old drivers and 80.4 FPS with the new drivers. That's actually a loss of 0.4%. But just like before, my method for benchmarking this game is by following a specific path and repeating that path each time. So there's a higher margin of error and I believe this falls into it. The good news is once I enabled RTX, I was able to get 35 FPS on the old drivers and 38.4 FPS on the new drivers. This gave me a whopping 9.3% improvement over the old drivers. But when I enabled DLSS, I was able to score 58.4 FPS on the old drivers and 61 FPS on the new drivers. That gave us an improvement of about 4.4%. The next game I tested was Red Dead Redemption 2. I chose this game specifically because you're able to play it in both Vulkan and DirectX 12. Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't support RTX, but it does support DLSS. However, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the game to run reliably on DirectX 12 with DLSS enabled. So rather than abandoning the game from the testing, I went ahead and just did the benchmarks in Vulkan to see if there was any improvement. These benchmarks were done on my ultra-wide's native resolution of 3440 by 1440. Just like before, I ran the game first with DLSS disabled. This gave us 63.2 FPS with the old driver and 62.2 FPS with the new drivers. That was a loss of 1.6%. As with the other games, this is also based on a benchmark that requires me to follow the same path over and over again. I didn't use the built-in benchmark in Red Dead Redemption 2 because I honestly find it a little bit unreliable. So this actually does increase our margin of error, and in this case, I think 1.6% is a little outside of that margin. Luckily though, once we enabled DLSS, things changed a bit. With the old drivers, I was able to get 59.2 FPS, but with the new drivers, I was able to get 68.3 FPS. That's a 14.3% improvement with the new drivers. It was honestly pretty impressive. The next game I tested was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is another DirectX 12 title that supports RTX and DLSS. However, Shadow of the Tomb Raider only supports RTX shadows, so enabling RTX doesn't really hit the system very hard, but does make the game look pretty good. The benchmark was also done on my ultrawide's native resolution of 3440 by 1440. My initial testing was with RTX and DLSS turned off. With that, I got 68.7 FPS with the old drivers and 69.4 FPS with the new drivers. I also did not use the built-in benchmark in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so this required me to follow the same path over and over again during testing. So these results are definitely within margin of error at only a 1% increase. The next test was with RTX on, and we were able to score 67.9 FPS with the old drivers and 68.9 FPS with the new drivers. This gave us an improvement of 1.5%. Still kind of close to margin of error, but enough of an improvement to definitely give the win to the new driver version. I also tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider with RTX and DLSS enabled. With this one, I was able to get 98 FPS with the old drivers and 98.5 FPS with the new, giving us a whopping 0.5% improvement. That was definitely within margin of error. I also did some testing on some DirectX 11 titles just to see if there was any benefit with the new driver version. I only tested a couple of games for this. Those games were Dirt Rally 2 and GTA 5. Unfortunately, there wasn't substantial enough of a difference between the two driver versions to really make note of it. So this benefit really is only going to help you on DirectX 12 titles. And for that matter, it really only helps with RTX and DLSS. However, this did seem to help Red Dead Redemption on Vulkan. So you might see a benefit in other Vulkan based games as well. But you know what, don't hold me to that one though because I only tested the one game. Ultimately, 
even though a lot of these scores were marginal, we still achieved them for nothing. I mean, yeah, 4% improvement doesn't seem like a lot, but it costs you nothing, and that makes it a pretty big deal. These improvements are going to be entirely dependent on your hardware. From what I've read, the higher end RTX 30 series cards are going to get a much better boost than the lower end cards like the RTX 3060 that I tested here. Also, if you've followed the evolution of this system here, then you'll know that it's running a Ryzen 5 3500. It's still running that CPU today. If you don't know, that's essentially a Ryzen 5 3600 with hyper-threading disabled and a little bit less cache. At the time we built it, it worked great, but that's when we were running a GTX 1660. The RTX 3060 it has now is pretty much CPU bottlenecked all the time. It's my understanding that this performance boost is being made possible by NVIDIA adding a wider resizable bar support and more efficient shader compilation. They've also attempted to reduce the CPU overhead in games. Because of this, we're seeing the best improvement on CPU bound games. Since my system is pretty heavily CPU bound, that might be why I'm seeing such a great performance increase. So, I think I may have pushed this Ryzen 5 3500 to its absolute limit. So, we're gonna see if a Ryzen 5 5600 is worth the upgrade. Definitely stay tuned for that video. One of the downsides of upgrading a CPU on a water-cooled system is that you have to drain the loop. So, that video might not be out next week, but it'll be out very soon. In the meantime, if you like getting performance for free, then check out this video where I overclocked this 3600 and got surprisingly good results. You guys have a great day.